What's going on, guys? Briar Rabbit here. Today, we're back with some more Dreamcast content because that's what the kids love these days, right? So today, we're going to be talking about this guy. This is the Wingman Converter SD. Uh, this thing works on the Dreamcast and the Saturn. And the main purpose of this is to adapt modern controllers to your Dreamcast or your Saturn. Uh, for the purpose of this video, we'll be mainly talking about the Dreamcast. I never tried it on a Saturn. I would assume it would work similarly, but I didn't test it. Uh, and this will use an Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox Elite One, Xbox Elite Two, PS3, PS4, uh, or a Switch Pro controller. It'll adapt those to a Dreamcast or a Saturn. It'll actually do many more controllers to th than that. It's got a list of more controllers on the back of the box. If you go on their website, uh, you can update the firmware to get even more controllers. Uh, many of them work wired. A few of them work over Bluetooth. Uh, we'll be checking all that stuff, going over it. Uh, a few of the on-the-box claims, immediate response. Uh, as far as I can tell, it did not add a whole lot more latency to the controller experience on the Dreamcast. I don't have any way of testing this as far as milliseconds go on a button press, uh, but I could not detect using my old-ass reflexes any extra latency uh, built into the adapter. Uh, Elite 2 Wireless, it does have wireless. Uh, I was able to use an Elite 2 Wireless controller wirelessly. Uh, and it worked great, honestly. Uh, and 200 blocks of memory capacity. This is actually one of the coolest features of this thing, is it actually has basically uh, a VMU built into the adapter. Uh, there's no screen, obviously, but you can actually use the Dreamcast built-in memory management to move over save files or whatever from your current memory cards uh, to the Brook controller. And if, as long as that thing's plugged in, uh, you can use that to save your games and stuff. So... Why would you want this thing? Well, uh, normally when I play old systems, I actually like to use old controllers. The controllers that go with systems, you know, goes with the feel of using the old system, the original hardware. However, the Dreamcast controller has always been kind of a weird controller, especially for certain games. Uh, for me personally, my knuckles have always just kind of gotten jammed in between this kind of memory card holder and the grips uh, to the point where long... Extended play sessions have always been a little bit uncomfortable with the Dreamcast controller. Also, the fact that it's shaped kind of more like a V as opposed to an A, meaning your your palms are more in like this as opposed to out like that, has always been a little less comfortable for me than other controllers. Um, the thumbstick is you know made out of plastic and not super comfortable. The D-pad is not one of Sega's best D-pads. Not optimal, especially for fighting games. Uh, there's only four face buttons, so fighting games, again, not perfect for it. Uh, you can use the triggers for some buttons, but triggers with fighting games doesn't get you the optimal timing. Uh, and there are so many fighting games available for the Sega Dreamcast that, you know, it, it would be nice to be able to use other controllers. Now, obviously, you can go out and get yourself a Sega Dreamcast arcade stick or something like that. However, you know, those old arcade sticks are getting up there in price these days. And frankly, they weren't that good to begin with. Uh, so having other options, very much appreciated at this point. And that's where uh, the Brook Converter comes in. So let me turn off this Dreamcast real quick. And I'll show you what this thing actually is. All it is basically this dongle here, this little box with a USB in as well as a USB. This is just meant for updating the firmware. Uh, and these two dongles. This one goes to a Sega Saturn. This one goes to a Sega Dreamcast. Uh, and that's basically it. There's a button on here and two LED lights. Uh, one of the LED lights tells you if it's in pairing mode and if it's on. And this one tells you if it's in uh, analog stick mode or arcade stick mode, uh, which I'll show you guys in a second here. So let's plug it in and I'll show you how this thing works. So First, I thought I'd show you the Xbox Elite controller here. This is the Elite 2 controller. And for the most part, this thing has worked really well using the Bluetooth connectivity. So there's no wires going to this, uh, but it's working perfectly uh, just over Bluetooth. And that adds a lot of cool functionality to the Dreamcast. No longer are you tethered with wires. Uh, I will say that this thing has been basically flawless with two exceptions. One is on occasion, when I start the Dreamcast up, I seem to lose the sync between the adapter and the controller, and I have to repair uh, the two devices together. This has happened infrequently, 
Uh, but with the Sega Dreamcast, you swap discs or to change games. You do have to power the system on and off quite frequently. Uh, so this could get annoying if it happens frequently. I don't know how to solve that, to be honest with you. Uh, it should just sync up every time, uh, and it only happens infrequently. Also, pairing the two devices together is very easy. You simply hold this button down for a couple of seconds, and this red light here will start to flash. Uh, and then you hit the pairing button on the Xbox controller, uh, and they pair up pretty easily. So it hasn't been an issue to pair it. I will say that on occasion, uh, it has uh, decided to just forget the pairing. I don't know if that's an Xbox problem or a Brook problem, uh, but that has been my experience so far. Uh, the other thing is with, uh, and this is with all controllers, is that I find that the Brook controller or the Dreamcast reading from the Brook controller uh it reads a full analog stick tilt uh, about halfway through an actual full analog stick tilt on a modern controller. So I'm going to try and demonstrate this for you, or at least show you what I mean. So this is the Dreamcast controller. To make a character like Sonic in Sonic Adventure 2 run at full speed, you would have to tip the analog stick all the way, right? Halfway would be him kind of walking or jogging, and then all the way would be him running. With the with the Brook controller and modern sticks, I find that the characters are at full speed about halfway through the travel of the analog stick. Uh, so it's not a deal breaker, and it's not even really a problem. It's just different, and you have to kind of get used to it. You can feel it. I find that especially like in the Sonic Adventure 2 uh, skateboarding areas or, I don't know, street slalom area, whatever it's called, uh, you, you feel it. You can totally feel that it's different. And for that reason, when I'm playing a character like 3D action platformer, I may actually stick with the Dreamcast controller moving forward. Uh, but, you know, you can totally play it with this. It's playable. You can get used to it. And in a lot of ways, it's way more comfortable to use a modern controller uh, than to use the Dreamcast controller. In every other way, though, I find that this is a better way to play video games. The D-pad, uh, it's much more responsive on modern controllers. Uh, PlayStation controllers, I find the D-pad is really good. Uh, the buttons are great. Having bumpers instead of only triggers is great. Uh, on an old Dreamcast controller, obviously there is a trigger for the left and a trigger for the right. Uh, and the way the Brook controller kind of duplicates that is that it just duplicates the right trigger as the right button. So both of these operate exactly the same uh, as do these. Now, if you hold down the share button and hit A or Y, it changes the controller. Let's see if I can get this light to be in camera here. Uh, it changes the color of that light and it, that is changing in between arcade stick mode and controller mode. So when it's red like that, it's an arcade stick mode. And that actually makes the right button the left trigger. So that would be great for fighting games where you want this to be punch and this to be kick as opposed to in regular uh, controller mode, this would be the same as this. So both of these would be kick and this would be punch over here. Um, this works really good for fighting sticks. Let me pull the fighting stick out. Where most modern fighting sticks are kind of set up like this where you have the R1 button and the R2 button and then the L1 and the L2. Uh, this allows you to have punches up here and kicks down here like Street Fighter intended. Uh, so that's what that's for. And it works really well. So I also played quite a few fighting games with an actual stick. Uh, this plugs right in. Uh, it needs no configuration. Uh, most of the games needed no button configuration either because it just... You know, it just knew what to do. It, Wingman, obviously, but Brooke obviously knows uh, that one of the big uh, use cases for this is going to be to hook up modern fight sticks to the Dreamcast because there's so many great fighting games on the Dreamcast. I also think it's worth noting the versatility of such an item. Being able to use your older PS3 controllers, Xbox 360 controllers, Xbox One, PS4, whatever controllers you have hanging around uh, on your Dreamcast or your Saturn, 
uh, it's actually makes it quite valuable. It, it really is a value add. Now, Brooke didn't send me this. Uh, I bought this for the purposes of my own use and I just decided to do a review on it because I thought it was so handy. I will put a link in the description so you can buy one of these for yourself if you're interested in on Amazon. That is an affiliate link. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about this whatsoever. I've been really enjoying this, uh, especially with fighting games. Um, which is probably the bulk of my playtime with the Dreamcast at this point. Uh, but just the versatility of it, uh, being able to use with Bluetooth, being able to use it with PlayStation controllers, arcade sticks, uh, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, having the VMU or memory built into the device, really it's quite a, it's quite a useful little device for the Dreamcast or the Saturn uh, and I'd highly recommend it at this point. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.